I get asked all the time how to get started in UX design. And today I'll share seven essential steps on how to get started in this very interesting field. My name is Maureen. I've been working as a product and UX designer for the past four years. And four to five years ago, I was sitting exactly where you are sitting now. I was feeling really overwhelmed and I really didn't know where to find a guide or reliable sources. So hopefully with this video, I can already take some of that anxiety away and teach you some of the steps that I took on getting started in UX design. There are thousands of online resources about UX design, but in this video, I'll share a very practical guide with seven tangible steps on how to get started in UX design. Before we get started, I want to give you a disclaimer. This is not going to be an easy process, but this will realistically take around six months to a year. For example, my own journey took me around 11 months, but still I'm learning a lot every day. Don't feel stressed like you have to finish a course as fast as possible. UX design takes time and that is also okay. Let's dive into step number one. It's really good to take some time to self-reflect and think about UX design as a profession for you. Would it be something that would really work for you? Because of course, just like any other profession, there are some people where a UX designer role is a perfect match. And then there are some where UX design might not be the perfect match. And that is also totally fine. So what I would first do is self-reflect and think about what are the characteristics that I would like to expand on and that I would like to take into my role and see if they could also be applicable to a UX designer role. So what I found when I look at my design colleagues or my design friends is that there are some characteristics that almost all UX designers have in common. And maybe these are also things that you will find in yourself. And in that case, UX design might be a perfect match for you. So what I observed in my colleagues and friends are the following characteristics. So first of all, UX designers are great collaborators and communicators, and we have to be because when you're working as a UX designer, you're working with many different people in many different roles. For example, developers, marketing people, product managers, business analysts. So it's very important that you enjoy working with people from different backgrounds. And it's very important that you find it easy to connect these people with each other, because as a UX designer, you're the one that's going to build bridges between teams. Another characteristic that I've observed a lot in UX designers is that they are analytical and we have to be because we will spend a lot of time analyzing research insights and extracting insights from data and work with these insights to come up with new solutions that might help the people that we're designing for. Working as a UX designer sometimes feels like solving a very complex puzzle where changing one piece makes that the whole puzzle doesn't fit anymore. And that is why it's also very important that you have that eye for detail and that you enjoy diving deep into a topic. That's because when we are designing solutions, we have to make sure that it works in many different cases and for many different people. What you often hear people say is that UX designers are very emphatic and we have to be because as a UX designer, you are the advocate for the users of your product. And it might surprise you, but a lot of companies don't really know their customers or their users. So as a UX designer, you will actually be the voice of these people. The second last trait that I see with a lot of my colleagues is that they are very structured and I would like to call UX designers also the Marie Kondo of design, because what we're essentially doing is bringing structure and taking care of all the things that don't bring joy. We get rid of those and we bring in things that spark joy, that are enjoyable, that are usable, that are functional and clean up our design solutions and the user experience with simple and elegant solutions. And lastly, but certainly not the least, is that UX designers are very proactive. And that's because many companies are still very unfamiliar with UX design. And that means that we have to evangelize UX design in companies. 
What do I mean with evangelizing? Evangelizing means that we are bringing UX design and its practices to companies and people that are not familiar with it. And we have to make them enthusiastic for it. So basically, you're a UX design champion in your team and you're bringing in new practices and new processes. So that is step one, to identify the traits that makes up a good UX designer and also to take some time to make a plan of your availability and the budget that you're willing or that you can invest into becoming a UX designer. Let's move on to step number two. And this is oftentimes the step that people actually start with. And I also understand that because step number two is about the processes and the tools and methods that you need to know when you want to work as a UX designer. It's very important to have a solid understanding of what a UX designer does and what user experience design exactly means before you jump into learning tools or methods. The second step is divided into three smaller areas. I'll cover those now. Not surprisingly, step one is to focus on what a UX designer does and what UX design means. And there are a lot of sources that you can read through and that explain how a day of a UX designer looks like, um, what UX design exactly means, what the differences are with product design and UI design, but we won't be diving deeper into that topic in this video. Secondly, after you've learned about what a UX designer does and what UX design means, it's important to look into the processes that we use as UX designers during our workday. UX design happens at the intersection of what is technically feasible, what's viable and what's desirable. And let me tell you what that exactly means. So first of all, when you're designing a solution, it's important that we can actually build that solution. And that also means that you need to have some understanding of what's technically possible today and in particular, what's technically possible in the company that you would be working for later on. Then it's also important to design solutions that are sustainable. And I don't only mean sustainable as in not um, affecting climate change even more, but also sustainable in terms of being profitable for the business that you will be working at. So when you start working as a UX designer in a company, it's also important to understand a little bit about the business side of that company. And that doesn't mean that you now have to study business and administration first. It just means that you need to understand that in order to design a solution that people like, we also need to design a solution that is profitable for a company. Otherwise, no one will be able to even buy that solution. So a great way to dip your toes into business is to start listening to some podcasts that are focused on bringing business and design together. And here's a list of some of these podcasts that I enjoy listening to. First and foremost, the podcast of Jake and Jonathan that is formerly known as the Product Breakfast Club. Then I also really like to listen to the podcast of DMBA, which is also a business course for designers. And on their website, you will find a lot of resources that are very handy when you're working as a designer in a company. So these are just a couple of podcasts that I enjoy listening to, but of course there are many more podcasts that you can find online. I'll suggest that you just do a Google search on podcasts about businesses and see what's there for you. So we talked about designing solutions that can actually be built and designing solutions that are sustainable for a business. And now lastly, but certainly not least, is that we want to design solutions that people enjoy using. So solutions that are desirable. And that really is the playground of a UX designer. Now that we're talking about designing solutions that are desirable, it's time to look into the processes that we as UX designers use on a day-to-day -day basis. So step three is also to familiarize yourself with the design process that UX designers use or the design thinking process as we call it. I won't dive 
too deep into what all the steps of the design thinking process are, but in general, what is important to know is that the design thinking process consists of five steps. Empathize, define, ideate, prototype, and deliver. And a great resource to learn more about the design thinking process and all the tools and methods that come with it is the IDEO Design Thinking Toolkit, which is also linked in the description box below. The design thinking process is important because this will be the foundation for your work as a UX designer. Of course, there are many different other processes or processes that are based on the design thinking process, but it comes with a lot of tools and methods that every UX designer is familiar with and that they use in their day-to-day -day work. All right, so we talked about the characteristics of a UX designer and the process that we use as UX designers. But so far, that's been pretty theoretical. Now, what do you actually need to do when you think, okay, UX design sounds like something to me and I am familiar with the UX process, now I really want to learn it. And that is what I will tell you in this third step. The third step is structuring your learning or your UX journey with a course or with other educational material. A lot of people ask me, should I enroll in a bootcamp? And the answer to that question is an answer that we as UX designers like to give to everything. And that is, it depends. It depends on how much time and money you can and want to invest in your learning journey. So a good way to start is to take some time and assess your lifestyle. Are you someone that needs to take care of a family? Are you working full time? Do you have a lot of free time, but not that much money? Or do you not have that much time, but you do have a budget? These are all things that come into play when you're thinking about how to give form to your learning journey. Of course, it's also very important to know what kind of person you are. Are you someone that is very disciplined and can you study on your own? Or do you need someone to support you and keep you in check? The cheapest way to study UX is to do everything by yourself. And nowadays there are so many online resources that it really is possible to learn UX design and become a UX designer with very little money. The internet is of course a great place to find free online resources, but it can also be very overwhelming to find resources that actually are of good quality and that you can trust. The downside of learning UX on your own is that it will take a lot of self-discipline and it will take a lot of time because you will have to find reliable study materials on your own. If you don't want to learn UX design on your own, then you have the option to enroll in a college or university or take a online bootcamp. The benefit of colleges and universities is that they allow you to dive deep into the topic and of course they offer you a degree. However, the downside of it is that it takes a lot of time, maybe even years. And if you're working full time or when you have a family to take care of, this might be quite hard to combine. Another downside that colleges and universities might have is that the materials that they teach or that they lecture might be outdated by the time that you hit the job market. So what you can do instead is enroll in a bootcamp. Bootcamps are way faster and oftentimes also more affordable than a college or university, at least when you're living in the US. However, the downside of a bootcamp is because they only consist of a couple of weeks or sometimes even just a few weekends, you can't really dive that deep into the topic. So what you need to understand is that bootcamps don't turn you into an expert. They give you a very solid foundation of what UX design is and its methods, but it's really up to you to then continue your journey after you're done with a bootcamp. When I became interested in UX design, I was very overwhelmed by all the resources that I could find online. And I really didn't know which one of them was good and which one was not that reliable. I also knew I wouldn't have the discipline to study on my own. 
and I wanted to find something that wasn't as long as a university because I wasn't very motivated to study for five years again. But I also didn't want to enroll in a boot camp because I felt like that would be too short of a time for me to really learn something about UX design. At the time, I was working full time and I didn't know anyone that was working in UX design. So for me, it was also very important to have some guidance and to understand what UX designers exactly do and to learn a bit about this field from professionals. And through Google, I landed on the course of Career Foundry. And the reason why this really spoke to me is because they offered a course that went on for a longer period of time. So I think it took about a year for me to finish my course. And I really felt like I needed that time to really dive deep into the topic and really master my UX craft. I did this course part-time because I was still working full-time. So after I came home from work, I would study and in, in the weekends as well. And this worked really well for me because I was so motivated to jump into this new career that I also wanted to learn as much as possible. The reason why I decided to enroll it by Career Foundry is because they offer a curriculum. And this was very important to me because I didn't have the discipline or the time to go and find reliable sources myself. So I really wanted some kind of a school setup where someone would offer me a curriculum and where I would know that the information that I would read was reliable and was good. Another thing that was very important for me was to have the guidance of a tutor and a mentor. And that is also something that Career Foundry offered. And the reason why this was so important to me is because I said I didn't know any UX designers because when I started to get interested in UX design, there weren't that many content creators or people sharing their experiences online. So I really did not have any clue of who exactly is a UX designer and what they're doing. So it was very important for me to get feedback on my assignments and have someone that can tell me a bit more about the profession and the field. And lastly, what was very important for me was the chance to learn by doing. I already spent so much time learning through books and writing papers, and I really did not want to do that again. And I really liked that with Career Foundry, I had the chance to build case studies and to actually build up a portfolio that gave me the chance to be creative from the first day and really do something, learn new tools, learn new methods, and don't spend that much time learning all these theories without putting them into practice. So as I already mentioned, there are many different ways to learn UX design. Enrolling in a course at Career Foundry really worked for me, but something else might work for you better. So really take your time to think about your lifestyle, your budget, the time that you can invest in your career change and find something that works for you. Step four is practice as much as you can. This may sound easier than it actually is because you might think I'll just have to start designing, but I'll give you some tangible examples of how you can really put your skills and knowledge into practice. Whether you're a student at a university, a boot camp, or a UX course, or you're studying on your own, the most important thing is to put theory into practice. So to really start using the tools and the methods that you learn. And this can be also the most challenging thing because where do you get this practice? Ideally, you would find an internship that allows you to grow into the role of a UX designer and offers you some guidance. But I also know that it is very hard to find an internship and not everyone has the privilege to get an internship. But that doesn't mean that you don't have any chances to practice. There are actually a lot of different ways to practice your UX skills. First of all, you can start to work for charities, especially the ones that are in your area. They might need some help with improving their website or understanding the products that they're offering or the services that they're offering. This might be a really good chance for you to get some volunteering work and practice your UX skills. 
Another way to gain experience is to hook up with local businesses, especially in the past year and a half, a lot of businesses were forced to start selling their stuff online. And this also means that you have the opportunity to help these businesses optimize their web shop or website. Another way to learn more about UX design and also connect with other designers is to attend online meetups and design jams. And this is something that I really like. I also attended two design jams where I had the chance to learn a lot of new methods, practice the design thinking process. And most of all, I met people that I'm still friends with today. So attending a design jam or a hackathon is also a great way to build a network. Lastly, when you can't find any charities or businesses or hackathons, then there is another option and that is to attend online design challenges. And these are essentially fake client briefs that you can take on and use to create a case study. Two examples of um, these online design challenges are fakeclients.com and uxchallenges.co. These two design challenges portals and also some other ones that I would recommend are linked in the description box below. And lastly, the most UX problems just come out of everyday life. So take a look around and see what are the issues that your family and friends are facing or what are things that you see happening in the news and that you could turn into a case study. Presently, with travel restrictions in place, it's very hard for people to know what they need to take care of or what they need to do when they want to travel from country A to B. Are there any kind of regulations? Do you need to quarantine? So these are kind of problems that you just see happening in everyday life. And that would be great case studies. So that was step four, which is practice as much as you can. On to step five. And now that you have some examples of how to practice, Let's take a look at the tools that you might be using. So as you can tell by now, UX design is way more than just creating pretty designs. But creating pretty designs is an important part, and we do that with design tools. The three most well-known design tools are Figma, Sketch and Adobe XD. And it really doesn't matter which tool you use to learn, because everyone has their own preference, the tools are very similar, and which one is used in a company really varies from workplace to workplace. So if you really want to make sure and get one particular tool, what I would recommend you do is to look at job openings in your area and see if there is a tool that most of the companies in your area use. Personally, I used Sketch at work but now I'm using Figma both privately as well as at work because it comes with a lot of plugins. It allows us to work online. So it's a great collaboration tool and it also is free for personal use. So to wrap it up, it doesn't really matter which design tool you use as long as you pick one that you feel comfortable in and that you have the chance to learn some of the foundations in. Now that you're equipped with tools, methods, and processes, it's time to go out in the open world and meet other UX designers to build a network. I used to be really turned off by networking because I felt like networking just means standing very awkwardly in a corner at some event space and trying to sell myself or trying to impress myself towards other people. And this really made that I did not have any motivation to attend networking events or to build a network. However, what really changed my mindset was to start focusing on what I have to give rather than trying to impress someone. And now I really attend these networking events as a way of meeting new friends as well. So networking isn't necessarily a way to impress others but it's a way to expand your circle, to meet new friends and to also learn from them. A network is also extremely useful when you start looking for a job because a lot of job opportunities are not on the market 
but instead we will fill them with people that we know from our network. So where can you find people to connect with? A website that you might already know is called Meetup. They organize a lot of different events as well as online events, but you can also join designer communities on Slack or on Discord. We'll link some of these that I really like to join in the description box below. And then lastly, a good way to connect with other design communities is to start sharing your UX journey on social media. For example, on Instagram or on TikTok, there are really big design communities there and you will find it very easy to meet like-minded people. So in the last step, you need to start thinking about your portfolio. And this might be a burning question that you have because I know a lot of people that are interested in UX design ask me about their portfolio and especially how to fill my portfolio with case studies. Now, I totally understand why this is a focus because this is your chance to get a job in UX. But what I really would recommend is to focus more on the craft rather than building a portfolio right away. And the reason why I say that is because recruiters don't hire you because your portfolio has three case studies. They hire you because of your skills, your experience, and also very important, how you fit into their team. Can people imagine collaborating with you? Are you a good culture fit? And if you take the list of characteristics that we shared before in this video, you might already have a good idea of what you need to demonstrate when you're in a job interview. Learn how to adapt the design thinking process to your own needs, learn how to use it properly, and also invest time in mastering UX methods and the UX tool of your preference. So we talked a little bit about gaining experience through practice and building your portfolio, or rather focusing on mastering your craft and then building your portfolio. And now I want to wrap it up and give you three more tips to make your UX journey easier. First off, find an accountability partner. Find someone that keeps you motivated, that supports you, that is there for you when you're feeling stuck and you want to give up. And ideally, this is someone that is also going through a career change or maybe even someone that's also interested in becoming a UX designer, but it doesn't have to be. It can also be a family member or a friend that checks in with you regularly. Another great way to get foot into the UX field and the UX community is to share your UX journey. Share the things that you've learned because they might be of benefit for others, but this is also a way to get to know other UX designers. So you can start sharing your journey on Instagram, on TikTok, on LinkedIn, on whatever platform that you're familiar with and that you feel comfortable with. And lastly, if you really want to stand out as a UX designer, also get some information beyond UX design. So learn something about business, get some background information about coding, about emerging technologies, and expand your soft skills. This will help elevate you in the application process amongst other UX designers. Hopefully these steps come in handy for you. They're based on my personal experience and you can use this guide as a framework for your own UX journey. So what can you now do after watching this video? I recommend you take on the free short course from Career Foundry that gives you a taste of what is UX design, what you will do as a UX designer, and that really gives you an idea of what we've talked through in this video. You can sign up for free via the link in the description box. For more videos like this, I also recommend you subscribe to Career Foundry's YouTube channel. If you want to see more from me, then follow me on Instagram. You can find me at ux.collection and I share a lot of content around UX design as well as my personal experiences working as a product designer in UX. 
Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you learned a little bit more about how to get started in UX design. And if you want to learn more about what a UX designer actually does on their day-to-day -day job, then I recommend you watch this video from Career Foundry where we share everything about the job of a UX designer. You'll learn more about what a UX designer does and we'll look deeper into three job descriptions of the tasks and responsibilities of a UX designer. I think you'll enjoy it. Go and check it out. Thanks so much again, and I'll see you again soon.